So in this video, we're talking about LinkedIn ads retargeting and everything you need to know about retargeting on LinkedIn. So let's dive in. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by b2bhero.co, which is my blog. And I'm bringing out so many different guides and resources around LinkedIn ads and other demand gen stuff, but loads about LinkedIn ads on that. There's a whole campaign manager blog. I'll put in the link in the description below, but also there's loads of articles coming out based on how to like upload, um, how to install your inside LinkedIn inside tag, which is really important for retargeting on the blog. So I'm going to be bringing out articles about how to do on Squarespace or WordPress or Hub, connect to HubSpot, all this different kind of stuff. It's going to come out on the blog. So the first thing you need to do is actually install that LinkedIn inside tag, which I just spoke about. So go to conversion, manage insight tag and C tag. Here you'll get three different ways. I have a whole video on how to do this in more detail and the different ways. And especially on the blog goes really step by step and in detail how to do it. So just pick which one you need to do. Either it's web, which website provider, etc. I want to install it, the tag myself. So you can do this on you know Squarespace or WordPress, whatever you want. Then you can go to I will send a tag to a developer. So you can just send them, you know, send a tag that way. Or this is the way I actually recommend it. I will use Tag Manager. So you just need this, you know, this partner um, ID and check out the blog about how to do it with Google Tag Manager or check out the YouTube video that I've also got. I'll put links in the description below, but I would recommend doing it with Google Tag Manager. So once you've installed your Tag Manager, go to Account Assets and go to Matched Audiences. So these are all the retargeting audiences you need to create before setting up your campaign, before launching your campaigns, because I believe it's still this way, where the data it collects is only once you've set up these campaigns, you can't set them up afterwards. So this is one of the first things you should be doing really. The different retargeting audiences you can have are company and contact. This is both retargeting and cold because you could literally, if you have a list of companies, and this is a great, great audience to create, um, you want to target or your sales team wants to target, then you can upload that there and retarget those companies, segment them by a specific job title or job title. So say we want all these companies, we want to target all these companies, but specifically we want to target marketing department, marketing directors from those companies. We can do that by uploading a company list or contact list. And so if you click there, you can basically see templates here and here on what specifically needs it. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory. You select the list from your drive and you agree and upload, name it, and that's pretty much it. Contact is basically if you have a list of contacts you want to target, you can also upload a list of contacts. So really one of the best ways of targeting, I do ABM strategies all the time on LinkedIn and it's unique to LinkedIn because you can't really do company targeting like this on any other platform or ABM kind of targeting on any other platform. I have a whole video on ABM targeting on LinkedIn and a mega article on b2bhero.co, uh, which is my blog. So the next one is event targeting. So if you create an event on LinkedIn, you can retarget anyone who's engaged with that event in some format. So you can do that there. Lead gen forms, I would always do this. This is a really important one to do. So for example, you can um, set on anyone who opened your lead gen form includes submit or only people who submitted your lead gen form. So this is really important because then you can start targeting people based around Anyone who's submitted a lead gen form, anyone who's submitted to become a lead, you can retarget them, say, back to the sales page. So I often do this. So anyone who's become a lead through a lead gen form, I now retarget them to go to my sales page or retarget them to ask for an action, which is how about now that you've become a lead and we've been maybe emailing you, you've been having some contact with you, how about now you do the next action, which is, you know, do a sales call or the deeper level action you want. So this is why you would want to retarget here. Or you can have, for example, anyone who submitted your lead gen form, which is anyone who's just submitted the form. Um, and you can exclude anyone who has not, you know, anyone who submitted the form, you can exclude um, by basically doing it by only people who submitted the form. So how you would set that up is on in the audience section campaign manager, you'd say, OK, I want to target anyone who's opened the lead gen form, include submit, but exclude only people have submitted the Legion form. So that will basically create a campaign which gets people who have only opened the form but not submitted. And this is great because a lot of people open and then get cold feet and back away. But they might still want to, you know, actually submit. So you retarget those people who've shown some interest but not submitted back to, hey, how about you actually submit it this time? Or here's some other gated content. Maybe you find this more interesting. So that's really important. And you can do this by... Um, 
over the past many days. I just set up all of them or most of them, just so I have them as options down the line. Then here you basically select which campaigns and you create it there. So it's pretty simple. Um, the next one is company page. So this is really cool actually. You can basically retarget anyone who has visited your organization page or people who clicked on a call to action on your page based around um, uh, time as well. So really useful. Another one being video. So video is really good. So this is all about percentage watch. So how many percent of people watch so I'd set up all of these campaigns based around if you have a video and also mix it up with that so it takes a bit of time to set all that up but it's good to have all the different options and you know you never know if people are really engaging with your video and people are watching a lot of people are watching 50% or more then that's great you want to do enough you want enough people but you want the highest amount of engagement so sometimes that's just 25% or more which is fine but sometimes it's more like 50% or more or even 90, you might want a whole campaign just around people who pretty much watch the whole video. Um, and this one is obviously really important, it's website. So you wanna target people who have um, basically uh, been on a certain page on your website or your entire website. So if you come here, this is really important to set up and you wanna be setting this up for your entire website and each individual pages along your website. So you can retarget certain pages as well. And here, this is this is what you wanna do. You have um, you, you have to name it, so okay, whatever it is. Um, and then you wanna put the, you know, how long. And then here, you have equal starts with and contains. Basically, here's a good overview of it. Select, exact, or equals. If you want to retarget any LinkedIn member who visited the exact URL provided, use this option only if you have a specific static URL. So Basically, if you have like uh, b2bhero.co forward slash specific blog article, but you have nothing that comes after which changes, then you can use exact. And then you can use starts with. Basically, if you're doing like, okay, I want to target everyone who visits b2bhero.co, and it doesn't matter what happens after the forward slash. Um, I just want everyone who does that. So that starts with, or it could be b2bhero.co forward slash whatever comes afterwards, but sometimes you have other stuff that pops up afterwards. So that's really, you know, good. Or choose contains if you just do the forward slash afterwards. So for example, the contains is probably the one I would use nearly all the time. So the type in the word or string. So basically, if you want to retarget visitors to URLs that contain the specific string of characters. So for example, here it would be blog tech. You just put in um, contains blog tech and it will just go to anyone who goes to, you know, or here you go, so uh, contains thank you. So um, anyone who goes to thank you. So for me, it would be like forward slash thank you. So anyone who gets to forward slash thank you page on my, with my inside tags, my inside tags on one website, which is b2bhero.co or superlumen.co, then you can put contains forward slash thank you or forward slash blog article specifically. So that's how I would do it. And I would do this for each of your different landing pages from the thank you page to the home page and all of them. And so basically you can retarget specific uh, levels of actions, but you can also retarget the whole website, any engagement. And the last one is lookalikes. So lookalikes, I've not had huge success with lookalikes. I've def I try them all the time, but I don't think LinkedIn has enough data um, and it doesn't, you know, if we're doing lookalike, lookalikes is the only way I would target on Facebook. Facebook lookalikes, I've got another video where I talk about where I spent $65,000 in one month um, on Facebook ads and just literally for B2B SaaS company and just A-B testing different types of audiences and basically the lookalikes did really well whereas the cold targeting, the interest-based targeting bombed. So with Facebook, lookalikes work really well. I'd only do lookalikes pretty much. Whereas with LinkedIn, I actually think the cold targeting is so laser sharp, so good for B2B that we don't really need to rely on lookalikes. We don't really want to give any power to LinkedIn. So just focus on targeting really well with cold. But if you really want to A-B test lookalikes, you can create, so you can create a lookalike here basically. Um, so depending on what lookalike you want, you can do a lookalike of different uh, audiences, like say one who visited your, your website. So if you found that useful, I've got loads of other LinkedIn ad videos. Check this one out, which is really useful about lead generation.